Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thanks once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Platinum Century Celluloid Fountain Pen. Before I get started, let me first remind you to check out my sponsor of this channel, Pen Chalet. Be sure to head over to penchalet.com for all your fountain pen virus cures. And be sure to use coupon code GOODWORDS at checkout to score yourself an extra discount on all your purchases on the Pen Chalet online store. Check out the description below for more information and links to the site. Also, don't forget to check out the Penboy Roy Pentertainment Podcast where my good friend and co-host of the show, Tom the Odd Oink, and I talk all things fountain pen related. Just be forewarned, it's not for children. You have been warned. I've covered the Platinum brand history in the past with the review of the Platinum 3776 Century Kumpu. So if you want more detailed information on the brand, check out that video when you're done with this one. The link will be in the description below. Just be advised, the history of the brand is really not filled with anything all too exciting or groundbreaking. With regard to the pen in question today, just know that there is a stark difference between the standard line of 3776 fountain pens and the celluloid line other than the fact that they are made of different materials. One of the most noteworthy differences is in the capping of the celluloid pen. In our celluloid version, we do not have the slip and seal cap that we have in the regular version, as well as the fact that the dimensions of the celluloid versions are slightly smaller compared to the regular 3776 edition. And of course, we can't forget about the differences in cost. In the end, we are left with the burning question, is the Platinum Century Celluloid worth the cost? If that's what you are wondering, then stick around because I will be tackling that very question. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad, or can be good or bad depending on you. The nib is a proprietary 14 karat gold nib made in house. It has an upside down heart shaped breather hole. Underneath that breather hole, 3776. Under that, a P for the brand logo. Under that, 14K for the gold marking. Under that, the nib size. And finally, under that, 585 to once again indicate that this is a 14 karat gold nib. Man, there sure is a lot of information on this nib. The feed is a proprietary plastic feed found on many of the high-end platinum pens. The nib and feed are friction fit into the plastic housing that is not unscrewable and fixed into the section. The section is slightly tapered with a yellow metal thread assembly that screws into the celluloid inner threads of the barrel. The outer threads are used in capping. The rest of the barrel is made of this jade celluloid. It has a New York City dirty water hot dog shape that tapers to the rounded end. The cap is more of the same jade celluloid. The finial is a rounded tip and traps a ring and the clip between the cap body. The clip is the same clip seen in your Century 3776 series pens. The center band is a wedding band style center band that has 3776 Platinum Japan etched around it. The pen was packaged in this outer black cardboard sleeve. Slide that off and you have a black branded cardboard clamshell box. Open that up and you have your pen sitting atop a felt gray bedding resting nicely in a pen body bag. Underneath the bedding is a secret compartment that contains a user manual, a warranty card, a sleeve of information on celluloid, and finally, a single proprietary ink cartridge. The proprietary ink converter is included pre-installed in the pen. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. I'll be the first to admit, I'm a lover of a toothy nib. And this fine nib completely and totally fits the bill. I want to say that although toothy, I cannot say it is unpleasant. It doesn't catch or feel scratchy. When it comes to the ink flow, I'm going to say it's just right. Not too wet or dry. There is never any issues regarding hard starts or ink starvation. It's a very well-tuned nib with a very appropriate matching feed. This is one of the things I love about a brand that makes their nibs and feeds in-house. It's just a balanced and near-perfect writing experience. With this fine nib, although a 14 karat gold nib, there isn't much in the way of line variation. The nib offers little to no bounce. When it comes to the balance, I think that posted is the best option. You can write with it unposted, but I think due to the length and size, it would be too small unless you have smaller hands. Writing with an unposted feels a little like writing with an Ikea pencil. 
whereas writing with it posted feels just perfect. Talking about aesthetics, I really love the look of the jade celluloid. I thought that I was influenced in a biased direction because my favorite color is green. So it's a good coincidence that my adorable non-fountain pen using wife happened to see a photo posted on IG by my good friend Vanessa Langton. It was a photo of the cherry blossom version of this pen, aka pink. My wife ended up wanting it. So as soon as she asked, I bought it. When I received it, I opened it up to find, to my surprise, I really liked how beautiful it was. I didn't think I would, but I really did. I suddenly realized more and more that there really is something to the beauty of celluloid. I love the polish of the pen as well as the color, and although not translucent, I love the sense of density. With the jade, there is such a density and richness to it that is unmatched when compared to all my other green pens. Though this is not one of my favorite pens of all time, I can definitely say it's up there in terms of being my favorite green pen. Had it not been for one annoying, ugly aspect, I would say it could have been a perfect pen. More on that later. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. These pens are not cheap. They have an MSRP of $490 here in the US. With retailers online, you can score this pen for a whopping $392. Now, when you consider the pedigree of the pen being a celluloid pen with a 14 karat gold nib, you could do worse, I guess. But that's still a lot of coin. I can definitely see where many would be more than turned off by the price. What's worse is the fact that there is limited supply of these pens with retailers here in the US, and that's largely due to the fact that there is limited supply even with the distributors here in the US. I'm told that the brand produces so little of these pens due to the expenses and complexities of working with celluloid. As a matter of fact, some years ago, Platinum's supplier of celluloid blew up. Yeah. The facility that supplied platinum with the celluloid actually blew up and therefore stalled the production of these pens. So I'm compelled to think that the rarity of these pens are also responsible for the price as well. That's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. I mentioned earlier that there was an ugly element that prevents this pen from being a perfect pen. And that's in the capping. Now, the Platinum Century 3776 series have a spring-loaded capping mechanism called the slip and seal. It is this slip and seal design that prevents the nib from drying out for allegedly two years. It's an innovative capping system that is precise and functions very well. However, in the celluloid versions of the pen, we are missing the slip and seal spring-loaded mechanism. In its place is a fixed cup that sits inside the cap and makes contact with the rim of the section. It doesn't claim to seal the nib and keep it from drying out for up to two years. However, it does a good job of keeping the nib from drying out for a couple of days. But that's not my gripe. Where it is that I have a gripe is in the size of the inner cup. It's about two millimeters too long and as a result prevents the pen from threading and capping fully into the cap. With the cup in place, the cap screws and unscrews in three quarters of a rotation. The reason that this is an issue is that with some of the pens, not threading it all the way when capping makes the barrel sit in a slanted alignment with the cap, where if the cup were shorter and allowed the barrel to thread completely at one and three quarters rotations, the pen would be fully capped and the cap and barrel would be completely straight. You would think that simply removing the cup in this cap would resolve this. However, you would be wrong since the finial screws into that very cup. The solution would be to actually shorten the cup by cutting it and then reassemble everything. But that would no doubt void your warranty. But I found that doing that makes a better capping pen and even if the cup is shortened, the cup not making contact with the section after modifying it still keeps the cap airtight and keeps the nib wet. It's a solution, but that seems like something I shouldn't have to do. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon. Decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Platinum Century Celluloid Fountain Pen? So I'm actually going to sound a bit like a hypocrite here because my short answer is going to be no, don't pull the trigger on this pen. Having said that, I personally bought three for my personal collection. Two in the Jade and one in the Cherry Blossom, the pink one for my wife. So why am I telling you not to pull the trigger when I myself bought three of them? Good question. The answer is really because of how exotic the pen is coupled with the cost. I honestly feel like for the money, there is a lot more out there that you can get if only it were not celluloid. And for even less, you can get the same writing experience with the standard line of 3776 fountain pens with a more precision build when it comes to the capping. 
Sure, it wouldn't be made of celluloid, but that's really who this pen is made for. It's made for the audience that really, really, really appreciates the material and are willing to pay top dollar for that material. In my personal opinion, there are more people that won't see the value in this celluloid pen and would be more than happy with a pen that is much cheaper and as beautiful even if not made from celluloid. After all, there are so many gorgeous acrylics out there. As for these platinum celluloid pens, I honestly think that these are really for people with a particular and specific taste in aesthetics. And if you're that type of person, then you will certainly want and need these pens. But if you're not, then buying these could leave you feeling a bit wanting. These pens are some of the most beautiful I've seen. However, I can say that they are not for everyone. That was my review of the Platinum Century Celluloid Fountain Pen. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.